Hallelujah. Good morning. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Hallelujah. It's a pleasure being here this morning. I see some familiar faces, and I see some faces that will be familiar to me by the end of this program. Amen? Amen. All right, so I'm going to get right into it because we have a whole hour of jam-packed. All right? Amen? So what the Lord has given me this morning to share with you is an uh, interactive monologue presentation. And it's about my life. It's a story about my life. It'll take you from childhood until now. So come with me on this little journey. And, um, and it's basically to answer the question, who is this Sister Batten? Who's this woman? Huh? Yeah. Amen. So I call this piece the monologue, breakfast monologue. I am an overcomer. I remember when I was young, I had so many hopes and dreams for myself. I mean, the world was mine just for the taking, you know, just going for it, seizing the moment, no fear, thinking I knew everything. Everybody just knew I was going to be somebody and make a name for myself. But every time I got this close to making it, something would cause me to fall. Oh, but tell somebody I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. See, these were the days when kids would play outside. You remember them days? I mean, play outside, they would make up games, kick the can, you know, all these different games, hide the bacon, you know. We would play outside all day long. Well, up until the time when that street light came on. Y'all remember that street light? Yeah. You knew that you had to be home before the street light came on or there would be some problems within your household. I'm from the East Coast, so I remember always having playing backgammon and tournaments outside on the cemented benches. I remember music playing everywhere. I remember jams going on in the park, DJ spinning his records. Y'all remember records? Yeah. My mother had a record player. And what I do remember about that is that you would always have to clean that needle because it would get that dust That's around there, is. right? Yes. And then you would have to put that little penny on there to weigh it down because yes. it would slide across and yes. ruin your record. Amen. Those were the days. Those were the days. I remember walking down the street with my friend and all of a sudden somebody would just start running and everybody starts running. And then you get a couple of blocks and you're, you're out of breath and you're like, what are we running for? Girl, I thought I heard something. Are you serious? <laughs> Praise God. Those were the days. Music and dance was meant so much to me. You know, it was a positive outlet for me. And, and a way to express myself creatively. And it was an escape for me, because with all of the fond memories, there are also memories that weren't so fond. I remember the days and the evenings where uh, we had domestic abuse and going on in a house. And I remember trying to help my mother and only to be slaying across the room and to see this scene being portrayed in front of me, trying to help her, but I couldn't. I was too small, I was too weak, and I couldn't help her. I remember tears calling from my face. Amen. And, uh, and I just remember these days, and is it a dream? Is this a dream? No, it was reality. It was my reality. I remember as a teenager growing up and being kind of confused because I was a product, or am a product, of a mixed race. So I did, I look one way, but I was the other. Am I black? Am I Puerto Rican? Am I black? Am I Puerto Rican? I was very confused about my identity. I remember in school when we always had to check the form, the one box, they allowed you one box for your nationality. And, and if I check one, would I deny the other? These were very confusing times for me because I was the only one that looked like me in my family. So because of that, I withdrew. I withdrew, and I didn't want to be around them, so I tend to go to the streets. Oh, but tell somebody, I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. So what you trying to say, Sister Batten? What makes you an overcomer? It was through Christ, amen? <laughs> it was through deliverance. You can't go overcome nothing without going through deliverance, amen? It was through Christ where I found my true identity, my purpose in life, amen? Hallelujah. How many overcomers do I have in the house today? Yeah. Overcoming your past situations. Don't matter where you're from, who you are, your, 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 your ethnic. See, it doesn't matter. Hallelujah. But through Christ who strengthens us, he gave me the power to stand up and love myself again. 
for how the Lord divinely made me. Amen. So if I don't leave anything else with you on today, I just want to let you know that I am an overcomer of, of abuse an overcomer of identity issues, because I know who I am now. That's Praise right. God. Hey, I am a woman of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, I praise you, Lord, and I just thank you. So my name is Darlene Tina Batten. I am a woman, a mother, a sister, a daughter, a cousin, and a friend. Most importantly, I am an overcomer through Christ. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So I just wanted to, uh, the Lord gave me that interpretation, and um, I wanted to introduce to you also the film. We have an opportunity to go and actually see my short film um, that the Lord laid on my heart, and it came from the obedience of my youth pastor in 2010 who wanted something special for um, a big youth explosion that we were having. And so this is where Walking in the Spirit was originally birthed. And then last year, when the Lord said this would be my first film, I'm like, film, really? I remember television and, you know, as the visions the Lord gave me and my purpose and that sort of thing. And, uh, but we skipped television, went right to film. All right, Lord, I'm, I'm walking in the Spirit, okay? <laughs> Praise God. So I hope that you all enjoy uh, Walking in the Spirit. It's a film about choices and consequences. And it's a message for all people. It's a message for all people. And it also has a strong foundation about the power of prayer for all people. Yes. Amen? Yes. For all people. So if we're ready, almost. Yes. And I would like to really quick before we get started, ask you if there's open seats in the middle, if you'd move to the center, because we have some people showing up and it's hard for them to squeeze past you. So if you would... Um, make seats available on the outside of the rows. That would be great. Thank you for shifting. Appreciate that. All right. Awesome. Thank you again. Amen. So I give to you Walking in the Spirit, the short film by Sister Batten Productions. Enjoy. I will trust you, Lord, and believe with all my heart. I just need to hear her voice, Lord, please. I just need to hear from my Paula. I will let go and let God. up the floor for questions but I just want to add that this was uh, taped in one day wow. it was pretty ambitious um, two film crews and one day and one location as well it was at my church yeah, yeah and we have some of our fellow church members here <laughs> praise God you know and the Lord just kept telling me, you know, we can do this. And, and, and the film crew, you know, they were from L.A. And, and they were like, uh, this is pretty ambitious, Sister Bad. And this is, I said, don't worry about it. We're going to do it. We can do this. Come on. We're going to, you know, and, and, you know, just go. Come on. We can do this, you know. And it was, it, uh, it was, it was a truly ambitious project. But you know how it is when the Lord gives you something and you ain't getting no sleep till you get that thing done. And then he places them people all in the right position positioning yourself right to get it done praise God praise God so um, we're gonna open up the floor now huh
for any questions. Yes, we are going to do a little Q&A. Um, if you have a question, please raise your hand. Uh, Lindsay's going to come around with a wireless microphone. We want to make sure everyone can hear you. So um, if you have a question, we'll just go ahead and begin. I do want to add, too, that it was um, all local people, um, all the young people that I work with in, in ministry. I call them my babies. There's one right there. Destiny, raise your hand. She wasn't in the movie, but she's still one of my babies. She's a poet. And uh, so it was all local people. Some of them are here today from the church and, and family members. Uh, my son was the dancer, the hip-hop dancer. That was my older son. And my husband portrayed the um, pastor. You know, so it was all family. I just put everybody, whoever has some time, ain't that right, brother? Whoever has some time, a couple of hours, you know, come on out. And, and we just work really, really hard on, on this project. And um, as you also saw that um, I dedicated this to my son because through that time also I had lost my son. Um, so it was really a tough time for me. It's not his story, it's anybody's story. But because uh, my son was such a mouthpiece for me in the street, you know, people wouldn't come to church, the young folks, but they would come to a sister bat and play or, you know. And so I, I had to dedicate the film to him because he was always there. You know, he had his struggles and everything, as a lot of young people do, as I did. As you heard my testimony, I rebelled and things like that. But he did know Christ, and he's in a better place right now. So it was just truly what I've learned about that project is... Um, it's not always easy to be obedient to the Lord, but I did it anyway. Amen. I did it anyway, and reaping the blessings now. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. So I'm sorry, there was a question. Yeah, hi. Um, my name is Linda. I really appreciate the work and the effort you. that you put forth in your film. It was really a blessing. Thank you for Thank doing you. that. But was your son, I was going to ask who that was at the end you dedicated yeah. to, you answered my question, yes. but said I had a different question. And was your son with you during the time you were filming this, or had he passed? He had already passed. Was that part of your inspiration to share um, a message like this? Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, because it started out as a play originally. And then the Lord started speaking to me to make this a film, but at that time I had, you know, unemployment in February, we're just talking last year, 2012, unemployed in February, lost my son in April, did the movie in July, had surgery in September, released the film in January, and here we are now, film festival in October. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. So, you know what they say, you know, you got to really press through the mess to get blessed. Yeah. And that's all I relied on. And I believe that the Lord gave, you know, really put that on my heart to get me, help me get me through. Because you're not supposed to dwell too long in that dark place. And I did learn that there's a thin line. It's real thin. And I'm able to understand now people, and when I minister, that people that lost loved ones are going through grief or any kind of thing like that. It is a process. I know that there's five uh, grieving steps and that you kind of slide all back and forth between all five of those steps, you know. But it was only through Christ. I cannot yeah. say it anymore. He is the one that just gave me the strength to go through. I had a play also. I didn't mention that too. I had a full-length play in November. Surgery in September, play in, in November. I mean, it was, and then Showcase of the Arts was, early, was also in April. It was a, a three-month thing. So 2012 was just, I was totally booked. And uh, what they say about ministry, it ain't all about you. That's right. It, it wasn't all about me, regardless of my circumstances. And I cried, and I pushed through, and I worked, and I cried, and I pushed through, and I worked. Everybody was like, you all right, Sister Baton, you, they just couldn't believe. And all I kept saying, it's only Christ. It's only Christ <laughs> who strengthens us. And this is the truth. When it came unbearable, he kept my mind focused on the message, on the message. And then my son, he wouldn't want me, you know, he was such a lively boy. And, uh, and so he wouldn't have want me like that to just lay it all down. And, you know, after working so many hard, I've been in ministry uh, for 13 years now writing plays. 
you know, the Lord just happened to give me these visions and I just basically started writing what I saw and just putting dialogue to the pictures that he would give me. So I keep it true. The way the Lord gives it to me is the way I want to give it to you. Amen.